Earlier this year, Australia's Sunshine Coast hosted the 19th annual Junior Golf State of Origin between New South Wales and Queensland. The Ryder Cup style event for players under 18 is organised by Jack Newton Junior Golf, an organisation that aims to encourage more youngsters to take up the game. The man behind it all, Jack Newton, has had to demonstrate plenty of courage and determination throughout the years and is thrilled at the foundation's achievements. I launched the foundation in 1986 uh, and from then on it's just grown like nobody's business and uh, I'm pretty proud of uh, the, the people that are working uh, for the foundation, they're doing a great job. We've grown now sort of 30 years on uh, and run 15, 16 uh, events on our tour calendar which are for the, the elite kids, those that have official handicaps. Um, and then below that we run 20, 30, 40 programs statewide for nine hole kids and, and beginners. Um, so we sort of developed a pathway now from a kid picking up a golf club for the very first time uh, right through to, to national level events and then turning pro once they leave the junior ranks. Newton was one of Australia's most highly regarded players in the 70s and early 80s. He finished runner-up to the late great Seve Ballesteros at the Masters in 1980, five years on from narrowly losing out to Tom Watson at Carnoustie in a memorable 18-hole playoff that decided the 1975 Open Championship. No, it didn't go, and that's that. The 1975 Open champion is Tom Watson. The course of his life was tragically altered, though, in July of 1983, when he was involved in a horrific accident. At Sydney Airport, he was struck by the propeller of a light aircraft, resulting in him losing an eye and his right arm. I think when you have a disaster like I had, uh, there's two things you can do. You go away and sulk in the corner for the rest of your life, die, or you can pick yourself up and go forward. And that's what I felt like you had to do. Uh, I didn't want to go and sit in the corner because I had two young kids at that stage. Fred Hollows, who was the famous eye man, uh, he used to come up and see me in the ward when I got out of intensive care and uh, tell me what happened the night, you know, that night. He said, I stitched your face up. There was that much going on, Jack. He said, uh, you know, it was just one of those nights, you know, where we were all on deck. Uh, and as far as I can, I'm concerned, it was the A-team and they saved me life, quite frankly. That fight for survival was one of the first of many battles that Newton would overcome on his long road to recovery. He spent eight weeks in intensive care and two more operations followed in the 12 months after the accident. Jack rose to meet the many challenges that came with his newfound circumstances with the support of family and friends. His surgeon, Professor Fred Hollows, is also clearly a believer in the old adage that sometimes laughter is the best medicine. I had to go in and have some minor surgery done to my eye, because uh, where it zapped me down through my eye, um, he said, fork and knife to the, to, the, <laughs> to the girl. And she said, Professor, what are you doing? Playing that in front of this bloke. And he said, don't worry, he's had more bloody fork and knives than you've ever seen in your life, this fella, so... <laughs> but he, he made it, like, fun. Uh, and it wasn't fun, I can tell you. With his own professional career cut tragically short, Jack was keen to remain involved in the game. Not content with just being a successful commentator, he wanted to do something to help improve grassroots golf in both his home state of New South Wales and Australia as a whole. He therefore established his foundation and more than 30 years on, the passion still burns stronger than ever. Many of our events he comes to, he starts the field. He physically introduces himself to every kid that hits off and watches them play. And uh, believe it or not, those kids are, you know, 10 and 12 years of age, and Jack is now 67, uh, and they all know him, and they all respect him, and they all love it when he comes up and says hello. I did it because I believed in it, uh, and I think it needed to be done. Uh, because, you know, when I came through, junior golf was interstate series and state championship, and that was about it. Uh, 
and there needed to be more. There needed to be more happening. And uh, I just felt that the amateur bodies were not entertaining the idea of kids playing golf. Surely they're the future of the game. Through his achievements through life, he could sit back on them and just think, oh, what a life I've had, but, and through the accident he had, but no, he's, he's got out there and done it, done it for us, really. He's made a change for us and made, made golf the sport that it is today, like, throughout, especially not only New South Wales, but Australia and the world, really, because some of the tournaments he has, like the Strix International, there's multiple countries that come and compete in those events, and it's a real strong event. Jack Newton Junior Golf is about much more than just tournaments for elite golfers. The organisation embraces the social aspects of golf and aims to prepare players for the rest of their lives in either the professional or recreational game. We encourage the kids to interact and start to develop those lifelong relationships. Uh, a number of years ago we um, decided not to have caddies because what that meant was that the kids then interacted with each other rather than with their parent caddy. Uh, and that's been a tremendous benefit and our numbers have increased because of that. Ever since I started playing golf, even though I was like 10 years of age and I might have been talking to someone who was possibly 40, it never really felt like there was an age barrier or anything different between us. I don't know if I'm the only one who gets that feeling, but yeah, I think definitely it's such a welcoming environment and even if you don't make it and turn pro, you learn such great life skills as your years growing up as a junior. 95% of our, our kids are, are non-elite players. Uh, they enjoy the game, they enjoy being part of the foundation, they feel good about that. Um, and provided that they're getting the support at their clubs through their junior program, they're involved in that team aspect as well as the individual, so we're being able to combine both parts of it. The events that we provide are encouraging those kids to continue on. Jack's contribution to golf in his home country has been immense. To mark this, he was awarded the Order of Australia and in 2016 was inducted into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. Those awards were very nice uh, and I mean, I must admit, I was, I was dumbfounded when, you know, both of those came forward. It was a fantastic night and uh, something I'll never forget.